Cutting unit boundaries define where resource management activities like timber harvests or restoration projects will take place. It is important for the locations of these boundaries to be clearly identified to ensure these activities only occur in the designated areas. Typically, these unit boundaries are designated with tracer paint and augmented with paper or plastic signs. Due to the cost of tracer paint, painting boundaries can be one of the more costly practices associated with timber sale preparation. This cost can be reduced by using virtual boundary designation methods. Virtual boundaries are clearly identified cutting unit boundaries that are unpainted or otherwise unmarked on the ground. There are two types of virtual boundaries, discernible and geofence. Discernible boundaries are natural or constructive features so conspicuous that they can be identified from a sale area map alone. Using these features as boundaries will not cause mistakes to be made while trees are cut. Examples of discernible boundaries are roads and distinct breaks in vegetation. A geofence is a virtual perimeter around or along an edge of a real-world geographic area. A geofence is a predefined set of coordinates from a GPS survey or from digitizing remote sensing products. The geofence is paired with a GPS receiver and a software application that shows the GPS receiver location in relation to the geofence. The sail map must have distinct designations for boundaries that are identified by paint, discernible features, and geofences. In addition, an official digital vector shapefile needs to show the formal designation of all geofence locations for the sale or project. This file will be the official file of record for all the geofence boundary locations for the sale or project. Although a geofence is a distinct line that describes the cutting unit boundary in an exact location, relocating a geofence boundary in the field is not exact. All GPS receivers contain some level of accuracy error. Because of this error, the GPS position might show an individual as being on the geofence line, but the real-world position could be anywhere within the circle as defined by the GPS accuracy error. With different GPS receivers having different levels of accuracy error, ranging from 2 feet for expensive models to 50 plus feet for inexpensive recreational models, the acceptable level accuracy error needs to be determined before any work can begin in units using geofence. The allowable contract tolerance is defined in the contract provision C2.30 pound, cutting unit boundaries. The allowable contract tolerance defines the level of accuracy error permitted when working along a geofence. All work in the unit is required to take place up to and not past the geofence boundary shown on the digital vector shapefile. The allowable contract tolerance defines the acceptable area of risk associated with the geofence. However, the allowable contract tolerance does not define a buffer around the boundary. All work within the unit will still occur up to but not over the geofence line as shown by the GPS receiver. The allowable contract tolerance simply recognizes that GPS receivers have accuracy errors beyond the control of the operator. When the sale administrator checks for contract compliance, it is not just the geofence that is checked, but also the allowable contract tolerance. The GPS receiver used by the sale administrator will also have an additional accuracy error that must be accounted for. When the sale administrator locates the geofence line, the GPS accuracy error creates an area of uncertainty around the sale administrator's position. The real-world position of the sale administrator can be anywhere within the area defined by the GPS accuracy error, even though it looks like the sale administrator is on the geofence line. When the sale administrator checks his actual position against the allowable contract tolerance, they could call stumps or trees outside of compliance when they were actually in compliance due to the GPS accuracy error. Therefore, the maximum GPS accuracy error, or worst case scenario, will need to be added to the allowable contract tolerance to determine if the operator is in compliance. The sale administrator will use the SA compliance distance, defined as the allowable contract tolerance, plus the sale administrator's GPS accuracy error when determining contract compliance. To minimize the area of risk around the allowable contract tolerance, the GPS receiver used by the sale administrator should be very accurate, requiring a good GPS receiver with low inaccuracy errors. The smaller the accuracy error, the better we are able to determine contract compliance. Before beginning the compliance check, the sale administrator will need the following tools and information. A good GPS receiver with known accuracy errors. 
The accuracy errors can be determined by using the National Technology Development Program GPS Receiver Horizontal Accuracy Reports. Access the web page and find the manufacturer and model of the GPS receiver. The accuracy matrix reports the accuracy of many different receivers, some that meets compliance and some that do not meet compliance. This list should not be considered an approved purchase list. Once you have found your GPS model, scroll down to the accuracy table. The accuracies are tested by canopy type, open, light to medium, and heavy to closed. There are several options to choose from in the table. In our case, we will not use an external antenna on this device. We will use real-time correction or WAAS and we will not be post-processing. Use the row where the number of positions averaged equals 60 and note the accuracy for the different canopy types. Convert the NTDP meter values to feet by multiplying meters by 3.28, rounding up to the nearest foot. Calculate the SA compliance distance by adding the allowable contract tolerance with the GPS receiver accuracy noted earlier. The official shapefile showing the geofence locations needs to be loaded onto the mobile device. A background map is not required, but it will be helpful for visualizing the area. For doing compliance checks in the field, the Two Trail Survey tool is recommended because it uses vector format, can capture georeferenced pictures along with a location point, can calculate distance from a point to a geofence, is free, and training and support is provided by the Forest Service. Additional equipment you will need, loggers tape or cloth tape long enough to measure the sale administration compliance distance, a plot pin for holding one end of the tape down, a clonometer and a slope correction table so horizontal distances can be determined. Alternatively, a laser rangefinder can be used to check horizontal distances directly. The contract compliance check is a two-step process. The first step uses an ocular estimate. Once in the field, the sale administrator should tape out a distance equal to the compliance distance on the ground to calibrate their eyes to the distance. The sale administrator will then walk along the geofence line as close as possible using their GPS device and tablet. As they walk, they will observe stumps and uncut trees to either side of the geofence. If stumps outside the geofence and uncut trees inside the unit appear to be within the compliance distance, then the sale administrator will continue along the geofence line. If the sale administrator discovers a stump or tree that appears to be close to or outside the compliance distance, then the distance to the stump or uncut tree needs to be measured. This is the second step in the process. The sale administrator will place the plot pin on the geofence line or as close to the line as possible and run the tape out to the suspected stump or tree and measure the horizontal distance correcting for slope. Adjust for any distance off the geofence line using the map scale on the tablet. If the stump or tree is within the compliance distance, continue inspecting along the geofence. If the stump or uncut tree is outside the compliance distance, then the stump or tree needs to be recorded. Record the position of the stump or tree into the mobile recording device using the following steps. If the stump is under open sky, place the receiver on the stump at the face closest to the geofence. Use the software to record the average of 60 positions to determine the location of the stump. If the stump or tree is under canopy, walk perpendicular to the geofence line away from the stump or tree until you reach an open sky. Record the average of 60 positions to determine your location. Take a distance to the suspect stump or uncut tree to record the position of the stump or tree. Once the position of the stump or tree has been recorded, number the stump or tree with tracer paint. Take one or more geo-reference photos of the stump or tree. Inspection of cutting along geofence boundary locations should occur soon after cutting begins along geofence boundary locations. It is best to do this on the first day of cutting. The sale administrator should inspect cutting along the boundary as soon as it's safe to do so and provide feedback to the purchaser. Identifying problems early will prevent small issues from becoming big issues. Frequent inspection and communication is key. Initially, operators may be hesitant to cut too close to the geofence boundary location out of fear and uncertainty with using geofence boundary locations. This could lead to trees designated for cutting being left uncut. The purchaser should be notified when trees designated for cutting are left uncut. If too many trees designated for cutting within the cutting unit are left uncut, the purchaser should be required to remove those trees. Again, 
frequent communication with the purchaser is key. Law enforcement will need to be aware of how geofence boundary locations are determined, what hardware and software is required for use, along with the new geofence contract requirements. Law enforcement should be invited to accompany inspections to become familiar with the inspection process. The errors used in the GPS receivers are based on no canopy, light to medium canopy, or heavy canopy. Canopy determination is somewhat subjective and not exact and may be subject to change as location changes. The distance of the cut undesignated trees beyond the contract compliance distance and quantity of undesignated trees cut should be considered. In addition to this, errors listed by the NTDC are to 95% probability. 5% of the time, the error may be outside the error specified for the receiver. These factors should be taken into consideration when determining if undesignated trees were cut by mistake, negligence, or willfully cut, and whether or not notification of breach of contract would be issued. Geofences have the potential to save time and money in the sale preparation process. However, for geofences to work efficiently in the field, proper sale administration procedures need to be followed and frequent communication between all parties throughout the process will be essential. Virtual boundaries can save time in the sale preparation process and can save a lot of money by greatly reducing the amount of tracer paint needed for marking boundaries. However, geofences will increase sale administration costs and add an element of risk around those boundaries. Additional information on using virtual boundaries can be found on the Virtual Boundaries Desk Guide.